Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And if you are in the here and now, welcome as well. I uh, have a uh, wonderful show today. Um, my good friend Doug Alt joins me from uh, outside of New York City in New Jersey. We've been friends for a number of years, and we've always uh, had interest in not only uh, UFO experiences, but in the more spiritual aspect behind what's behind what's going on. So we've known each other for a while. We've had a lot of different discussions. And uh, Doug got into uh, near-death experiences, and I've always uh, thought these were very important. I wrote a book called Contact Modalities, where I talk about different ways to get material out of the field and different um, uh, whatever, whatever you want to call it, modalities, and that it's basically all sort of the same thing, that some people have access to the field by channeling some through meditation and some through near-death experiences. And so today we're going to talk about near-death experiences. I think this is one of the most important um, stories that you uh, can put out because with the UFO sighting, if you see something, well, you see something. Okay, that's fine. You saw something. It's just a story. But it's not until you, as I said, in the UFO experiences, it's not until you talk to the people who are having the experiences that you're going to learn something that you have to get in there and you have to figure out what's really going on. And the way you find out is to talk to the people who are interacting with the phenomena. I believe it's all sort of in interlinked. And so that's where we're going to go today. We're going to do some near-death experience. And Doug has offered to help me do some interviews. And these are the first two that Doug has, has brought forward that we can we interview. And uh, there's been millions of these experiences. And uh, they started about the same time I started. I don't know if you know this, Doug. I started in 1975. That's when I got dragged down the rabbit hole. 1975 was also the year when the first near-death experience book was written. And I don't think that's coincidence. That's uh, the near-death mm -hmm. experience book was actually written the same, it came out the same week that Travis Walton was abducted, which is the same week that every single night that Travis Walton was gone, there was a UFO or a nuclear missile silo, either at Loring Air Force Base or Wurzburg at uh, Malmstrom Air Force Base. And you see all these things are sort of uh, tied in. Bud Hopkins got involved in 1975. Linda Howe got involved in 1975. Stephen Greer got involved in 1975. So for me, I think uh, near-death experience is near dear to my heart. I actually wrote a paper uh, in that period of time when I was at university about um, near-death experiences, about people who have visions just before they die, people predicting their death. I went to hospitals and talked to chaplains. So I started in this field of, of trying to figure out what happens at death. It's the most important question. And then you can work back. If you know what happens there, then everything yeah. else starts to make sense inside of life. But we're doing it sort of backwards. We're sort of gathering these sightings and hoping that the answer is going to jump out. And we are totally ignoring the people who are having the experiences. And they're the ones that know. People will say, well, you know, it's just anecdotal. They just had this experience. No, no. The people who have the experience are the ones who know. The people who are judging it are the ones who believe. The, until you know, you, you cannot you cannot evaluate. So welcome, Doug, and thank you for uh, allowing me to do some near-death experience stuff. Um, I've, I've done a few. We did Evan Alexander, and we've done a few, but uh, this is very important, so thank you for uh, assisting me with this. Well, I'm thrilled to uh, be able to do it. I know you know my history with UFOs, but uh, to, I don't know. I'm going to say two or three years, probably longer than that, NDEs really just filled the gap. I, uh, the UFO thing was uh, like on a hamster wheel, and I just felt like we were repeating ourselves and going over and over the same thing. And it's all still fascinating to me. I'm, in fact, I'm starting to post some of my UFO sightings on my Facebook again. Um, but fighting off depression through the last two or three years of mayhem in the world with COVID and all the nonsense, uh, I, I started watching Jeff Mara's show. Uh, Jeff Mara is a fabulous guy, and I, I became sort of fr uh, online friends with him. And I started watching all his shows, and and I I spoke to a number of near death experience experiencers that I contacted after watching them. I was so moved by the presentations, and they made me feel better. I I I, I was always on a I was always, I have a, a term, I'm always running a low grade depression, which is something that came from Woody Allen. You know, he always said, I'm always, I'm always a, have a low grade depression, like a fever. 
And um, I don't know, I just started to go, you know, there's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to fear. This is a temporary game, a stage. All life is a stage. We're on stage. I've had uh, visual analogies of an amusement park. Bus drops you off at the amusement park in the morning. You all go in. Some go on the Ferris wheel. Some go in the horror, ho horror house. Some go, uh, you know, eat cotton candy. So, yeah, everybody does something different. And then the gates close and you all come out. And it's it's really how I feel about life and, and a lot more to it. I don't want to talk too long because um, I want to introduce L, who L I reached out to from Jeff Mara. And I said, wow, this is like an amazingly great story. I just, and it's not only the stories, it's the sincerity of what's coming out of the person. The person exudes a non-agenda, a sincerity. I know that we all look towards everything in the world as to what to be wondering, like, what? okay, what's the catch? What's the agenda? What's the this? What's the that? Uh, is there a book for sale? Blah, 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 you know, all that stuff. So um, she just spoke uh, in such a fantastically flat-footed manner in a way of, I, I believe this. I, I see and I believe this. And if I believe this, and this is real, this is incredible, like I've said about many others. And um, so uh, I reached out to Elle and we started speaking. We kind of have a symbiosis on a lot of different topics, dovetailing into my show Hypnata, which I'm up, up to and everything. And uh, so that's how it started. Um, and I'd like to just let um, Elle introduce uh, Yvonne because that's how Yvonne came to the uh, situation here, okay? <laughs> Thanks, Doug. Yeah, my um, I have a, a light that's uh, over, you know, the um, recording space and it is flickering like crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm thinking that uh, there's going to be some powerful things uh, said right now and that we're going to be discussing. <clears throat> but as you said, yeah, we uh, quickly um, are developing a friendship. And um, the same happened with Yvonne. Yvonne and I belong to um, an organization that does near-death research. And um, I met Yvonne through uh, that organization. And you know, she was uh, recommended to call me and we had a conversation and found that, you know, we both had this off planet experience in our near death experience. And it was amazing um, because, you know, I didn't share for a long time or one of the reasons I didn't share for a long time about my near death experience was because you know, when you've seen movies or anything like in media, when somebody talks about um, a near death, they're robes, they're angels, they're, you know, all of these things that, you know, nobody's, I never heard anybody talk about, well, I went to outer space, you know, I, you know, visited another planet. And so she and I really connected on that. And in talking more, there are a lot of very strange um, similarities in the path of our life. Um, so, you know, I invited her to, <laughs> to come on, you know, with, um, with us so that we could both talk to you about um, our experience and, you know, and continue to share. Um, so Grant, uh, thank you for um, allowing us to speak on this platform. And Doug, thanks for, you know, for making the suggestion for us to do this, so. Yeah. Glad to yeah. do so. And by the mm -hmm. way, um, Grant, was that Raymond Moody who wrote that first book? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I thought so, maybe 1975. All right, thank you, so. Um, Yvonne? Yvonne? <laughs> no, I was gonna say, Grant, you wanna introduce Yvonne? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, Yvonne, let's uh, let's hear a, your uh, a little bit about how you got dragged into this thing and um, how your relationship to uh, L and and we can go from there. Uh, yes, uh, first of all, thank you, L, for 
inviting me to this uh, to this moment here together for, of sharing. Uh, thank you, Doug and uh, Grant, for allowing me to be here as well. Uh, for anyone who is listening, my accent is French. I'm French. And I grew up in Europe, actually, so my first language is French, but I've been in the US for about 20 years. And uh, as Elle was kindly explaining, I'm part of uh, uh, the IONS organization, the most respected organization on the near that experiences uh, studies and, inv and um, investigations. So I, I've been part of IONS for many years and had my own uh, group here in, in Raleigh as a, a rally leaders here in North Carolina. And I was actually recommended, as Elle was explaining, by um, somebody from the IONS headquarters that are here also in this area to, to be connected with Elle. Uh, it was the most amazing conversation. Uh, we talked about our mutual near-death experience and also the element of extraterrestrial in our NDE. Uh, that is actually very particular. Uh, not, it's. I don't think it's in. I think it's in minorities in general. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have a lot. She of doesn't the, mean minorities as in people, but the minority it's, of, it's, yeah, I, 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 and, I, I, yeah, of course. Of course just did, to be but... clear, <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, I meant <laughs> in percentage wise, there are not that yeah. many people that have that <laughs> element together. Uh, so we discussed that. I had two near that experience, uh, so, so, and one was with that element, and the other one was totally divine. Uh, so, and we discussed. We have a lot of. We have a similar background uh, spiritually, and um, yeah. So we became. We had that amazing conversation, and I'm just so honored to be invited here. And. <laughs> That Nell did a gracious, Elle did, did a gracious act of sharing her time with me. So could, could we <laughs> could we have either one of you just go right into your experiences so that we can hear what they are and have those similarities? Okay, just just uh, I got one question before, and just a little heads up. I'm I'm cooking for my mother who's uh, uh, disabled, so I will be on another phone shortly. And it'll just be for five minutes or 10 minutes and uh, well, I'll be following the conversation. But um, Yvonne just brought up and say, bonjour. We have, we have, I'm, in, I'm in Canada, so uh, we're, we're quite familiar with uh, French here. Uh, but you, you mentioned you had two near-death experiences. And, and one of the things, I don't know if you know, that UFO experience people who claim that they were on board a ship or that they had uh, uh, UFO experiences, 37% um, of those people say they've had a near-death experience. And I would say that the vast majority of those people have had more than one near-death experience. So you've had two. Did you have a, a did, you, did either of you have a UFO sighting or is it just the near-death experience experiences? Yeah. Um, I had a um, situation where um, my daughter, um, who, when we get into talking about the, the near-death experience, I became um, in analyzing things afterwards, I saw that she was kind of connected um, to me through some type of universal cord while I was having my near-death experience. But she had one when she went to Denver and we, <clears throat> we had, um, I had an experience he in, here at home of um, uh, sensing something um, extraterrestrial that was confirmed a little bit later. So that's those are the only things that have happened, but something also happened recently that I can get into later um, if you want to share, Yvonne, your experience. <laughs> uh, and as we were sharing, uh, Nell and, uh, Ellen and I, about extraterrestrial, my first NDE had actually a spaceship involved and two beings picking me up. So wow. but I, don't know, I don't know when you want to talk about that. Yeah. But I, just to just... answer your question. It's just an interesting connection because a lot of the people who will be watching this will be people who are into UFOs. Even and if you look behind Doug, Doug has the the painting of the uh, the Lady in Light or the uh, yeah. whatever whatever the name of it was given to her, uh, and that was uh, an experience by Chris Bledsoe, who's a good friend of Doug and I. I and he had at least two near death experiences. So mm -hmm. you can see that these things are all sort of tied together, and it's this this other world that we we don't we see trying to see through the veil. And that's why I think it's so important that people like you come forward 
that you've been on the other side and you can sort of give us a better idea of what might be over there. So it's yeah, okay. fascinating that there, there is this connection and whatever it is, it's just, there's a connection, but how it all fits together. That's why we're relying on uh, people like you to figure it out. We, Doug and I are sort of just trying to analyze it with our left brains. You people have actually been there. So I appreciate your, your, your stepping out. So who wants to start with a, with an experience and, and, and then we can go for some more questions. Cause I, I, I think this is going to be very interesting. I'll leave Elle uh, the honor as she invited me in. Just go ahead and Elle. Oh, oh that's fine. <laughs> but um, uh, where do I begin? Um, the um, My extraterrestrial um, uh, encounter was only a portion of my NDE. I dimensionally traveled and um, I also went to outer space. And I, you know, saw nebula from, you know, just, I didn't have a body. I just saw, you know, I'm, I was probably an orb or something because I didn't see a body. I only saw, you know, out and I saw a nebula. And then um, rapidly I was at a planet where the people's, uh, well, the extraterrestrial skin was very um, translucent, very white and translucent. And then they had um, they had some type of which I kind of interpreted as an aura, which shone against their skin that made them, you know, emanate seeming like they were different colors at times. And um, I was the reverse extraterrestrial where you know, you see contact events where there's an ET that's maybe hiding in a corner or behind a tree or something like that. So that was me on their planet. So I didn't have a lot of interaction with them. I more interacted with my guides who were telling me, you know, this is another culture and this is another species and God made all species and you know, this is another planet, things like that. And um, I just observed them for a while. So, um, and, you know, I, I, you know, usually share that when you have an NDE, I think something happens with your mind because you're automatically um, expand, your, your mind expands to the point where your NDE does not seem, you're looking at things that don't seem ridiculous. So it doesn't click that, you know, say you didn't know that you were dying when you have your NDE, it doesn't necessarily click right away that you're dying. So you'll hear about people seeing their body. You know, I saw my um, uh, body on a, um, uh, in a, in a room on a, uh, some type of procedure and but it didn't click and I didn't know that that was my body and apparently that's very common with NDEs but um yeah so a lot of these things happen I didn't think this is strange why am I um, going through space right now this is strange why am I seeing on a different planet and seeing a different species your mind just expands and adapts to where you are, where everything just seems possible. So, yeah, that's really great. Yeah. You know, um, if I may interrupt, um, uh, Yvonne, I listened to your interview with Peggy. Yes. Okay. And one of the things you brought up over and over again, which I really, uh, which I really sticks with me, and we'll go with this whole conversation, is this amnesia, amnesia on both sides. Yeah. And amnesia, like we're here. And we have an amnesia of not being home. I don't yes. remember being on the other side. This seems real to me. This is like coagulated and real. Yet mm -hmm. when you've crossed over, mm -hmm. then you started to have an amnesia of this. Was Am I correct? Yes, yes. And uh, like uh, Elle was saying, and you were saying so, reminding so well is uh, once, I mean, it's as far as my experience was uh, once I was out of my body and seeing my lifeless body uh, in a bed and those two beings of light and angel i would at first i called but they were beings of light with long robes like the one behind you 
Um, so I knew that I was experiencing the moment. There is no thinking of before. I, it's like you said, it's like we close a curtain behind us, a mm -hmm. memory, right. and there is no memory behind. We are just all our attention, a thousand percent of our attention is in the present moment, what we are experiencing. Right. Like El was saying, it's right. completely normal. Uh, we are it. We don't. It's like a, a, a seamless continuation. We don't feel that oh, mm -hmm. there's suddenly another person. We think differently. We are the same being, uh, just in another in our real form uh, the the body is like a, a suit or a vehicle in which we we experience our earthly life but the real us is that energy being uh celestial being i call it because i had two and the, the second one was in the divine in heaven and so so yeah so we have that memory there is no memory left i didn't remember my daughter which i loved more than anything uh, we were focusing, it was as if what we just experienced was over. Now, it, you know, and, and like I was explaining, it's like we, you do a sport for forever, you ski for, for 20 years, and then one day you say, okay, I'm not interested in skiing anymore, let's go and, and scuba diving. That's what, you know, whatever you had on earth is over, and then now you're focusing on what's happening ahead of you. Fantastic. Yeah. I, and L, you you can say uh, similar things. I, I know that Yvonne, you said you finally knew you saw your hands because at the end you said, oh, I saw my hands and they were glowing. They were yeah. like the light. Yeah. They were like the light because yeah. you were saying that there was a point where you weren't sure if you ever saw your body. And and Elle, you, you saw, did you see your light body on the other side, your actual, you know, the light body? I, when I was traveling through space, I didn't see anybody. I believe I was an orb because I could see out. I had conscious awareness. I knew who I was, but I didn't see anything around me. You know, there was, um, there were times where I, you know, saw impressions of a body, but, you know, I, it, it, it's a, it's a little bit hard to explain, but it's, um, you know, more orb type yeah. um so and i think for being that everyone's nde is different then and i am coming to believe that a lot of things are even genetic or ancestral um then you know you might have a mixture of different you know um presentations of people's bodies so you know, um, Peggy raised, uh, asked you a question. And it's, it's only because I, I saw Yvonne's interview recently that I have more stuff I remember <laughs> about it. Oh, I don't mean to like, but um, no. I asked you if you're O negative. I know I'm O negative blood and, I, and I've had a lot of UFO sightings. Now I've, I've had some strange events, nothing that I would call a um, near death experience, but I have had an out of body experience where I was on the ceiling once looking down uh, at my body. I saw that lasted for about 15 seconds. Wow. And then I had two or three dreams in my life that are not dreams. And they're kind of hard to explain, but my grandmother walked down the hall and I opened the door. I thought everything was just normal. And I saw her, she was glowing because she's dead for many years. And she walked past me and she just said, Douglas, everything is going to be okay. Hey. I do, yeah, I do. I do believe that dreams uh, and even ions with their research uh, believe that dreams is just a portal towards the other dimension. Uh, some of them, the one we remember, like you did, uh, and that stick, stick in your mind forever and all the details. Uh, when you have that, it's not a random dream that evacuates stress and everything. Uh, this is really when you're connected through a portal to the other side uh, and there's a communication happening. And uh, because when we have any encounter or experience with the other side, our memory, our reality is bigger than this reality. And, yeah. that's, why, and that's why it stays in our mind forever because it takes mm -hmm. precedence to mm. 
of what we are experiencing here now. I'm I not think. sure if uh, Grant. I'm not sure if you can hear us, but do you want your yep. microphone? Do you want your microphone on? Because can you turn it on? No, no. Do you want it on or do you want it off? Because we hear you. We. I think your audience is going to enjoy the first Grant Cameron cooking show that you're. <laughs> 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 but maybe you want to I, just, I just said, I'll, I'll mute it in a sec i just want to make a comment you had your dream can you hear me yeah yeah i just make a comment you said that you had the the uh, vision of relatives that it's going to be okay you of course know that's where the song let it be comes from right the the okay. song with uh where, where he he has a bad time uh paul mccartney in the 1960s and he's you know he's on the drugs and and uh, Yoko Ono's come into the the Beatles, and and it's all falling apart, and uh, the the Beatles are falling apart, and uh, he's all upset, and he has the dream, and his mother comes to him, and she said, Paul, it'll be okay, let it be. So that's where yeah. he comes up with the lyrics. When in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be, let it be. That's where the song comes from. Well, I, I think huh. I remember you saying that once, but thank you for telling the story again. It's great. Okay, continue, and I'll... I'll be finished cooking here in five minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so um, so go ahead, L or or whoever. Yeah, L, go ahead. Uh, did you have something to add to what I was saying about, um, you know, uh, about the reality and uh, be being bigger during our experience on the other side? It's the reality is so much bigger. We feel like this earth is a dream and we are waking up from a dream. Elle, did you have that experience as well? Well, um, one thing that I came to realize more so, I guess my NDE kind of confirmed this is how thin the veil is. For example, you know, Doug, what you just explained, you, you could have left your, your body or you could have, you know, astrally projected um, and, you know, had that experience or your, your mother could have actually visited you. And people don't realize how thin the veil is where one moment you're here and another moment mm. you could be almost completely gone. And when I say gone, just your body, but your, but your energy lives forever. So you can be literally transported to a completely different place. And, you know, there's, there's no thickness of so, or something or like um, logistics or anything to go through. So, um, and, you know, I, you know, the same thing as Yvonne, there seems more real than here, you know? And I think part of that is because in having this um, experience, we, we know the, the truth of things. We know, you know, what the, what the veil it looks like when it's down. So it's harder to take a, everything that happens now in and around our lives as seriously as, you know, yeah, we get frustrated. We, you know, deal with this, you know, minutia and things like that. But still, when you see something that incredible and you're in another place, it's hard to take our, our lives that we're living right now as reality. Um, the difference with my NDE than with Yvonne's was that I didn't forget my daughter, but I think if I didn't have that cord and that guide who looked like my daughter with me, then I probably would have because, you know, I was so caught up, like Yvonne said, in the moment, so. I yeah, and you know, you, you bring a good point because I had to rectify that with my daughter. It really hurt her feelings. Uh, I did <laughs> I, I did a documentary called Back from the Light. There is a documentary called, and I'm not trying to sell it, but when we were, <laughs> when we were filming it, when we were filming it, my daughter, I feel it was actually purpose for people that had an ND and a family of them. So we were interviewing yeah. both to see how they reacted to it. And then when we filmed my daughter, she said, well, uh, my my mom didn't remember me and I thought well that's all the worth I had for her and I and my heart broke because I mean she's the most important but it, I had to explain to her it's because we have that amnesia it's I mean and I had that amnesia I mean in my yeah. situation 
And it's not because I was forgetting her because, I mean, when those two beings came, uh, Earth, and, and two weeks before dying, I was, I knew I was going to die. I had that 100% uh, certainty that I was leaving. I called my sister in Europe to tell her I'm going to die, but don't worry, it's all okay. <laughs> and she's uh -huh. like, what? And uh, so, so, um, so we we are actually we were maybe prepared sometimes for for the journey. Uh, I don't want to talk. You know, I'll let you decide uh, when we share our own experience at that time with. Uh, but I had two total different experience. The first one was with the spaceship, and the other one was totally in God's mm -hmm. life, Christ. So it was like two different experiences. So, but we let you lead this meeting. Well, uh, now the grand is making a souffle. I guess I could take over. Uh, yeah. And and uh, I mean, there really are so many questions. There's so many questions a person like me has with this. So first of all, thank God we have amnesia, right? Thank goodness you have amnesia. Now, what if? What if we didn't have amnesia when we when we came to Earth? So as soul beings, how would we, why would we complete anything? Why would we bother to interact with the game, so-called game here, if we remembered, oh yeah, God gave me this job and um, when I'm 72 years old, this is gonna happen and when I'm, you know, and I, so I know all about it. We have to kind of come in here blind and, interact from everything I've learned from the NDE people. So think of that. Yeah, it's like a soul contract. Basically, you can't be tested and refined with your soul if you have all the answers and if you, you know, um, have all the memories of things from before. Um, one thing that became from confirmed for me in my NDE is that reincarnation is real. And, you know, Yvonne will tell you that you know from our our um uh, spiritual you know uh perspective before there were some things that were we questioned in regards to you know the certain things you know that were changed after our nde so um that being said um when you um are having an nde or when you um are being born you're not going to remember definitely you know a life that you might have had before because your soul kind of needs to do the hard work yeah. you know so yeah and and yeah and it's beautifully said l and the beauty is that if we come to earth we are we have that project to learn something and it's it's most of the time geared towards love what love is uh, in mm -hmm. different facet of life of circumstance mm -hmm. of situation it's always right. going to be towards love and uh we say god's love but it can be creator love it, whatever you mm -hmm. you you, mm -hmm. know, you think of uh so that's always a purpose it's to grow spiritually uh with that that love aspect of life and and, and everything and right. so so we we bring those you know those highlights of what we want to learn that highlight, uh, but right. then we we have like And set there's nothing we can change we can change whatever we experience but the lesson we learn will be the one that we wanted to learn before coming here uh so uh, but that brings up a great point that yvonne is saying um that's a um uh, a really important point to emphasize thanks yvonne about love because yeah. um i don't know you can um kind of um share uh, from that, but one of the things that I learned and one of the reasons for my experience was to experience love from different perspectives. 
So basically you, in doing that, you learn how to um, experience something more objectively <clears throat> and to have the sense of love and appreciation for something and to shift the way that you think in today's world, in this reality. You know, for example, uh, Grant, you know, we're doing a show for Grant's show right now, but he's cooking and serving his disabled mother. And somebody might, you know, think, oh my gosh, he's cooking, but he's r running the show. But that's exactly how we're supposed to be, you know, responding to life where it's like, you know, those types of things are expressions of love and are more important than, you know, worrying about, you know, a book, uh, a book you know, how, yeah. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, absolutely. right <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah and so that's what right and so that's you know kind of if we lived our lives a little bit more free and authentically like that you know and taking care of the things that are important then yes. I think that our lives would be a lot more freeing and you know just more divinely connected so yeah yeah can, can I ask how, how in, in this line of questioning, how did the the experience change your life? Were you a different person before? Did it flip the whole yeah. world upside down? Yeah, well, uh, shall I answer that? Or? Yeah, you can start, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it changed it in many ways, and I think it changed for every, most experiencers. Uh, and also the deeper you go into the experience, the more... Di different things are in your life uh, so for me I was um, uh, already a good person so that's not a trick <laughs> I'm trying to flatter myself but I feel like I was and uh, <laughs> and uh, I was uh, I had a very very strong faith um, for me it was it was more in the Christian faith uh, so um, and I don't want to see any I'm not a judgmental person in any religion, in anything. We all have our own journey. Uh, what changed for me is uh, after my experience, my ND experience, I was less judgmental of others uh, and other spiritualities and other. I respected everyone. You know, one thing. So my very first one, you have to imagine uh, my my body is lifeless and then I have two beings of light right there with that long white robe and they were like a clone of each other short white blondish hair and they're telling me telepathically even it's time to leave behind them is that spaceship uh very sleek white pearly white open like that and uh so we go in that i mean i'm i don't know if we, it's time to share all the details on that but the thing is uh when we arrive where we arrived crossing the entire universe the beings that were waiting for me there were so excited to see me coming home and they say she's here she's here she's back mm -hmm. and my faith my faith before that was telling me we are born here that's the only time the first time and then you grow and then it made me question uh, a lot of things because i thought well if they say she's back it was like about 20 beings that were so excited and filled with the unconditional love and kindness and welcoming. It was like my clan, my tribe, my loving family and a higher perspective of love than anything we can experience here. And so I thought, okay, uh, I was taught that it doesn't exist. And also any element of extraterrestrial. So uh, for me, all that changed and I had to expand my consciousness and my understanding and uh, and also the everything was more based on love because I had a second one, which was right in God's light. Uh, so for, it was actually more based on love, everything you do on love more than on dogma and tradition and teachings. Uh, it was really going to the root of, of love uh, that many people on earth since childhood we come 
as children of light and of the other worlds and we're filled with those children are innocent and filled with love but then i always say that every day we are traumatized if we compare ourselves with who we were before coming from to earth which were that all those magnificent being of light and love and then suddenly we are confined in this body in this world in this uh thicker and heavier energy yeah. which is earth and uh, so we are traumatized people yell at you people tr uh, tr uh, you know uh, you get lied to anger uh, you know fear all those things uh, betrayals so we build those walls and we become those adults that don't believe in love anymore and kindness because we have we have been traumatized and like Elle was saying once you have had that NDE, that near that experience, you, all those walls are bro are broken because now you are no longer in that suit. You go into that amazing home. Uh, I, I don't know how to call it. It's a real home. You feel that you're in your home and, <clears throat> and all those walls are, are broken and you're that free spirit. And then when you come back here, uh, you see now with a, a lot with the eyes of love, like you are on, you have a magnifier and you can see things, you can see people's motives, uh, you know, because everything is is based on another perspective, this, which is a, a higher loving, uh, you know, perspective. And like Elle was saying so beautifully, uh, it's not how many degree, how many book, how, how many, how popular we are, how, you know, what we have achieved humanly that will count it's everything that was done from a soul and a heart towards mm -hmm. others and that's our lesson on earth uh, i would mm -hmm. say that's what changed uh, you change you become more loving more and more peaceful because you don't you know when you don't know what's happened after there's a lot of fear and anxiety and that will influence how you walk and how you interact with others uh, and how you know it's like you're on a boat that is sinking and so you push everyone out to stay alive and that's what earth does uh, but once you know that there is a big land there and everybody's going to be safe so you, your <clears throat> perspective is different how you ha interact with people how pe much peace you have in your heart of course there are other beings on other planets and i've these beings they took me to we landed on a planet. I mean, I'm not going to share the details now, but um, so you are, you know, there's that big world over there, but uh, there's also a divine world where all is really filled with love. Be be before, before, we go, before we go to hell, <clears throat> can I just ask a question? What Did they explain why they're bringing you to a planet? And were you surprised by seeing a, like a flying saucer? Did, did you understand <laughs> sort of what was going on at, because it, it's sort of like, uh, I don't know if you had any background in near-death experiences or UFOs, but it would seem to be like suddenly you're on another planet and these beings are there. Did they, <laughs> did they sort of explain why they're taking you to a planet? Yeah. No, so just like Elle was so nicely explaining, once you are out of your body in the spirit form, everything seems totally normal, even if are in our human body. It okay. feels like totally. So they were telling me they were the two beings there with white robe and say, Yvonne, it's time to go. So I said, and I said, you know, I knew it was. I said, yes, okay, like, like, okay, yes, that's totally normal. What we are doing, that's what is supposed to be. So we went inside. That that spaceship was open. We went inside. There were three seats, <clears throat> both each of them get on one of each side, and I went in the middle. The one to my right took a handle with his left hand. Of, and at, first of all, the thing, the, the top closed and then the one to my right with his left hand push a handle and in one second, one second, literally one second, we crossed the, the, the cosmos and we kind of landed on a, I would say a planet that looks like the moon, but I don't say it's, I don't say it's a moon. I'm just saying because it was dark around and and suddenly we are inside the structure we are not outside we're inside and inside everything is totally illuminated and those beings are waiting for me and uh so it looked totally normal i felt at that moment that earth was so far away a few galaxies away and that actually uh i was there on a learning mission type of thing because there's a lot of things that happened there but at the moment i had to leave 
uh, that woman being took me my hands like that, uh, her hands on my cheek. And she said, Yvonne, your experience on planet Earth is such a difficult one. And I said, yes. And she said, you have to go back, though. Yeah. Uh, and I knew I had to go. I did not question that one. And I said, yes, I know. It's like I wasn't finished where I was. And when she said that, those two beings came back wow. with that spaceship. And the same way we came back, the, my second ND, I really fought hard to not come back. One <laughs> <laughs> here was, I found all kind of excuse. Uh, but for this one, uh, no. So that's changed to me because my faith was telling me um, uh, alien, I mean, extraterrestrial are from the devil, um, uh, <clears throat> everything like that. So, and we had only one life. But all that change shifted, and I started. That's when, because I'd never looked at any spaceship or anything before, because it was from the devil. So, uh, so from that moment on, I started to investigate and look and planet and cosmos and aliens and everything, because I wanted to understand who they were, because I, I had other experiences after, and they were always the same type of being, very illuminated, white hair, white blonde, white robe, loving, lo exuding love, but also strength. Those two beings, when we were in, in, in the spaceship going towards, I knew that they were sent by the highest, I would say divine power, God, or because I had 100% the certainty that nothing, no one extraterrestrial, nobody could ever touch us. I was so safe with those two beings they had that immense power to, uh, to them that nothing could ever happen to me ever wow. uh, l before you tell your what grant asked which was how it changed you and everything um two observations and grant you and i we both like natalie sudman right natalie sudman who crossed over in the military scenario in iraq and the yeah. the bomb went off and it's quite amazing that I I can't and I I got to tell you I'm probably a, I'm not an expert on on experiencing an NDE but I'm an expert at listening to NDEs I must have listened to over two hundred of them and I cannot tell you how many tell you including Natalie Sudman that everyone's waiting for you in white robes it's like yeah. white robes and they're like hey we're so happy to see you it's amazing and they're applauding and they're clapping and they're like. I read Natalie Sudman's book and, you know, it was like an amphitheater and, 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 yeah. and, yeah. and all these beings are there and they're applauding and they're welcome back. And, and there's oh, such overwhelming words fell. Cheering up, cheering up. Yeah. Yeah. And world words fell, fell people to explain the acceptance and love and camaraderie and everything you can think of the greatest feeling that you, that everybody has, but so many of these NDE people, have this um, robe experience. Now, one one more thing I wanted to ask you, and this is one of the things that perplexes me about the other side. I've heard many times that people say there's no time and there's no, no time or space. So, you know, okay, so as a musician, I know that if I write a song and it's three minutes long, if we play that song on the other side, how can you listen to something that's linear in time three minutes if there is no time so uh, because time is different in the other side time is mm -hmm. not linear the time is only a stacking like that a stack, a for stack. Example, yeah for example in my second nd when i was talking to jesus i saw christ but the not the religious all loving and unconditional love everything he was explaining to me was like he was explaining 10 things to me at the same time and i understood all of them at the uh, same time okay mm -hmm. I don't know for you, Elle, what you have to say about that. Yeah, um, you explained it really well. It's it's um, time doesn't really exist. You know, everything happens instantly and everything is very, um, you know, everything's just right away. So and you don't even think about time. You know, no. you lose the concept of time and you don't even think about it. It's all like, yeah, it's perfect. It's like you're in that perfection of, of the, the moment. And uh, for example, right. I don't know if we can go that far, but I had met a friend uh, uh, during an IANS conference. I met a woman who had been 
had an NDE. And because we were both from Europe, it was Arizona. We were like, okay, let's become friends. And uh, and I had never shared my story. It was in 2013. No one, I never had any YouTube video. Uh, and then she looks at me and she said, Yvonne, I saw you in the Crystal City. And yeah. and then my second NDE was with, with the Crystal City in Celestial City. And then you see, she saw me there, but we had an NDE the same year, but not the same month. And yet we were there almost at the same time, at the same time, because yeah. it was, uh, it's, it's an amazing story. Yeah. yeah, a lot of those types of things happen um, afterwards, so. That's really interesting. <laughs> well, we have to get to, um, uh, Elle to describe how it changed your life, but you brought up yes. something I, I have to jump on before I forget. You mentioned the Crystal City. Can you describe the Crystal City and where you think it is? Because the first woman, I wrote a book called uh, a, a UFO Sky Pilots, where I talked about the people who've flown the craft. They talk about this thing like you described where in one second you're on the other side of the universe. It just instantaneously you move from one place to another. And she talked uh, relentlessly about the Crystal City. So I'd like you to describe your experience with the Crystal City because uh, it, it, it was something she talked about quite a bit. Um, so unfortunately, I didn't see much of it. But uh, so that was in my second NDE uh, the same month. I, I was it's all due to arrhythmia. I had arrhythmia in my heart. So the sec my second one, uh, I was instantly in God's light, uh, pure love, pure light. I was like El is, is describing so well. I was no longer a human. I was a spirit, an energy of light. And it was all peaceful, the highest level of happiness and joy and everything. I mean, it was the highest level of everything in all the dimensions that can exist. And I'm just going to make it short. My, my, my whole story is on YouTube, but... Then I saw Christ coming towards me and, uh, and, you know, people are always asking, how does it look like uh, he came first as a pure light? And then as we progress in our interaction, he took more and more a human and solid form uh, and then also even expanded to help me when before I came back to give me energy of life so I could come back because I, I resisted coming back. I said, uh, I said, I don't want to go to that planet again or <laughs> I said, it's a very violent planet. People, many people are mean and selfish and I can't relate to that planet. I want to stay here. <laughs> and anyway, you can't send me back there because my body is broken. And so, um, so but anyway, uh, you were asking, but then when we proceeded out outside of the light, in front was a crystal city. So it was like huge avenues. Uh, the buildings were, were all so white goldish that they look like crystal because they were so emanated such an energy of light that was coming out of those buildings they were really wide uh this there is the, the sky was extremely blue but there was no sun and it was really wide avenue and i saw that that i, I was looking at that and we were progressing outside of the light and entering there and i saw women angels children angels that were they are beings angels exist they're just different beings uh, going also in it but uh to say so i didn't see much of it but my friend the one from the netherlands who saw me in a crystal city she said i i probably went in the city but my memory is blocked because i was walking towards it and a lot of experiencers have some of our memories blocked because otherwise, mm -hmm. if we come back, we would just be on standby and waiting to go back <laughs> and don't do anything, you know, because we, uh, we still have to finish our mission. Uh, but she said that she went inside, she said, we were talking together about it. And she said, well, when she went inside, it, it was actually, there were all kinds of beings from everywhere and even angels also flying and beings like us, all, all type of beings. And uh, uh, when she arrived in the center of it, uh, she met uh, different spiritual beings that were famous on earth and that came as these being over there like Buddha and over. And then they were explaining, everyone was explaining what they were, were teaching on earth and so she said that when she went in the center, the vibration of that center was at the highest level. Uh, and she discussed with each other, uh, they discussed together about the teaching, they, you know, the error they did, but the good things as well. And, 
And then there was a huge, huge light that came in. And then when that light landed, it was also Jesus Christ. Uh, Christ. And uh, he took her inside his chest. It's like, come, I'll bring you to the creator. And then she was propelled inside that huge light. So that's all I know about the Crystal City. Uh, maybe I should do some hypno, you know, hypnotherapy. To, a lot of experiencers do that. Uh, there is a, a special... A technique from uh, Michael Newman, uh, who was actually a psychiatrist, and so a lot of experiencers just go to the uh, therapies that have that expertise because they can actually uh, take them back into their NDE and then see more of what was blocked. So, yeah. and I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I don't know more about. <laughs> well, that, that's that, that's fast. I just heard. That. I wanted to pick it up before you. Uh... Before I forgot to ask you, that's I have a uh, my assistant Desta does that hypnotherapy stuff. Do you do do either of you meditate in terms of uh, and does that help in terms of opening things up or you quiet the I call it you know like the 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 left brain the the, the rabbit running around all the time just going crazy. And if you quiet that down, you can sort of revisit and and remember more. Do you meditate, both of you? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I pray. A lot. I pray and meditate as well. Both. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, both. Yeah, every day. <laughs> so go ahead. Yeah. So let's go to Ella. Um, how, how did it change your life in terms of like where, what type of person were you before? And did it flip your life upside down? Or was it sort of just a, a, a very powerful experience? Um, You know, it's more like a subtle transition through a very powerful experience. But that's one of the things that um, Yvonne and I connected on, where it was just kind of like, you're pretty much a regular person and, you know, you have your life frustrations and you have different things that you go through that are good, that are bad. But, you know, in general, um, you're frustrated with the world and, you know, at times and things like that. And then you have this incredible experience that confirms for you um, certain things and teaches you uh, new things. So uh, for me, it was, you know, she said it really well, was that you learn to, um, to incorporate love a little bit more into your perspective and into just the way that you, that you see things. I mean, the world is still the world. You may still have frustrations, but there's a lot, you feel less judgment about, you know, um, certain things that would, um, you know, uh, frustrate you or situations or people, things like that. And you kind of, um, you have a sense of, you have, you're more objective in general and um, in how you approach life. So I think that was the biggest way you know, I used to make this joke like everybody should have a good NDE once in a while. And then I stopped saying <laughs> at least that once. Because... <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah. And then I stopped saying that for obvious reasons. But, you know, um, you know it's, it would really change, you know, it would really change the world, honestly, which well, is which... kind of fortunate when you think about it. But. <laughs> Well, which leads to the qu two questions. I mean, uh, was this chance or, and do you feel lucky? Because I, I mean, a lot of people like Doug and I would say, boy, I'd, I'd like to do that. I just, you know, just once. Because it's yeah. sort of, uh, you can hear about it. It's another thing to actually experience. So do you feel lucky that you had this experience? And this, and a related question is, do you get the impression that you, that this was not random and that you are to tell this story? That, that yeah. because 40% of all like experiencers, UFO experiencers have <laughs> enough experiences. And I always say, do you think that's chance? Like, what's the chance that you get grabbed by an alien walking down the street and taken aboard a ship? And then you also have a near-death experience. What if it's not chance? What if you actually planned this before you came in? Because you talked about reincarnation. So is is this a random event? And are are we are you the, here as like missionaries to sort of yeah, help awaken can... the world? I, I always say um, the missionary I... of the light. I always say that. But go ahead, El. You just say exactly what I usually <laughs> say. Go ahead, El. I'll talk. Um, and Yvonne actually did do missionary work. So yeah. that's why that's funny to us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I did. Uh, in France, I was a minister in the in the Christian 
uh, environment. I mean, I was in diplomacy at work, and I left everything to go with uh, to go to to learn theology, and then I became a missionary. Uh, had a healing, you know, healing ministry, and then abandoned everything after my divorce. And uh, so, so yeah. Uh, so I always say that we are experiencers, are missionary of of the light and of God, because in this w today world, people are abandoning any kind of belief that there is some a world beyond. There is maybe a creator or a light or source and. Uh, and it's getting more and more into the heart, you know, we are on our own uh, and we have to survive on our own and it's very bleak. <laughs> and so maybe, maybe we always say that together, the experiences, maybe when we had that experience to encourage people and say, listen, we went there, it exists, just hang on to life, just, just finish mm -hmm. your course. Mm -hmm. It's not easy every day, but finish it. Uh, you, there's lesson that you, that, that will be jewels when you get on the other side for your own growth. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. And for me, you know, um, I was very involved in a church at one point as well. And, you know, I was uh, like a leader in the singles ministry and all all of that stuff. And then the church split and went through a whole bunch of, you know, religiosity type of things um, at some point. And, um, you know, um, and I also just booked a hypnotherapist appointment with um, a, hypno a quantum um, hypnotist named Alyssa Herrera. So I'm going to have my first hypnosis. So to answer your question, um, some, um, uh, NDEers do get um, hypnotherapy to kind of pull out more information from their um, NDEs. But, um, you know, one of the things that I discussed what before was that, you know, in the incarnation process, you agree to do certain things. So I have a feeling that I agreed to do this and that it was necessary for me to go through this to answer your question, Grant, because um, I came from a place where, you know, I was an open person, you know, as far as open to other ideas, spiritually, scientifically, things like that. But I also um, had some traditional thinking as well. And, you know, I'm the type, I have a science brain where I want proof a lot of the times. And that's not just with something like this. That's just in general, you know. And this kind of proof to me, um, I mean, I believed in uh, life after death, but this proved a lot of things to me in regards to our existence, in regards to extraterrestrials, in regards to the fact that, you know, um, I believe we're genetically related to um, different extraterrestrial species. I remember when Yvonne and I were first talking about her experience and she's explaining the crystal city and things like that and how the, and how the, um, the extraterrestrials looked. And I was like, Yvonne, they sound like Pleiadians. And she said, really, do you think so? <laughs> and um and then, you know, we talked about the fact that maybe they were ancestors, maybe they were, you know, maybe they're um, alive in another, you know, uh, planet and dimension or something. You know, we're still uncovering the actual history of our existence as humans on Earth. So anything is possible. And, you know, in talking, you know, uh, we talked about the fact that I had complete organ failure, complete organ failure. I was completely septic. My CO2 level was over 200. And the max your CO2 is supposed to be without having brain damage, meaning you're vegetated, is 35. So being over 200, I was expected to... Um, be in a vegetated state if I had survived. So, and my prognosis was less than 1% chance of survival. So the fact that I'm here and I'm able to speak, 
I'm able to think, you know, I have all, you know, my mental faculties and things like that means that there is definitely a lot more to this existence than, than we realize, you know, and, you know, also in speaking to something else that was mentioned, the connection that we have, you know, who's to, um, who knows that, I believe that when there are other beings out there that are on a higher vibration frequency, when you're in a death state, that it is possible for us to connect with them. And maybe that's one of the reasons why we, um, Yvonne and I had the experiences we had, because it's like we were going on a trip, you know? Yeah. And so, oh, go ahead. You were going to say something. No, uh, no, go ahead. Finish your thought. Yeah. So I was just saying that, um, so I do believe, you know, I waited a long time to talk about mine because I wanted to just, you know, analyze it a little more. And it takes, huh? it takes time to realize what right. happened. It takes time to process it. It's make a lot. Sense of it. You know, yeah, make sense of it. Right. And then find right. people like us. It's all pro. And then when you find people right. like us, at first, we don't even dare to share the whole thing because we say, okay, well, if you say that, mm -hmm. now they're going to think we're totally insane. And It sounds uh, weird. <laughs> yeah, science was so good with that. And it were, you're usually, usually afraid and, to sound yeah. crazy. So. Yeah, no, they encourage <laughs> you. Yeah. Ellie, Ellie, you, made, you made me think when you have the NDE and you're in this vibrational state that's not a normal state, it's almost like you're you're hitchhiking out in the galaxy. It's like, and then these beings, exactly. it's like these beings. It's exactly by, what it is. Yeah. And then you're like, they'll pick you up and they'll be like, hey, listen, she's she's like hovering over here. We can pick her up and take her for a while, you know? But right. Exactly. You know, you know Doug, you said that perfectly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. There was, there was a question that Doug had that uh, when you ask um, uh, why we have this and if it's an honor. Uh, or if it's uh, what, how, why some have the NDE. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean you wanted to say something, Doug, or is it? No, no, no. Ba uh, basically, I just wanted to touch on that. And and we can come back to this question because okay, I love, yeah, a, yeah. I love yeah. a definition from both of you on yeah. what love is. Like, what okay. is your definition of love? Because it's one of the most common words tossed around. And yet, I, I every time I hear somebody talking about love i'm not sure that they know what they mean by it i know right i don't really know that anyone really knows what they mean by love is, is I mean, it love or is, is it unconditional love is no, just, a just love like so i don't mean romantic love let's leave that out we all know that we all know that romantic love is based on uh desire um it's based on bio biology it's based on a lot of things I, I can I can identify love the easiest with like a kitten or a puppy. Mm -hmm. If you give me a little puppy or a kitten, I'm like, oh my God, I love this little thing. What, <laughs> what is that love? And 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 yet when it comes to people, like my defi my definition of love is seeing strangers as you see yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a very good Yeah, when you when you um the love that you have for a kitten, it's kind of hard to explain the love that's on the other side, because I like for me, I have a hard time telling people I love them unless I really mean it, because I yeah. think in our society, we we've gotten very casual saying, oh, love you, you know, things like that, yeah. Yeah. even with people that we don't even know that well, I just can't do it. It doesn't feel real i have to really feel love in order to tell somebody hey i love you you know um but um also when the love that we experience here in this reality is usually selfish in some way yeah. you know like the kitten makes you feel good therefore you love the kitten hey, well, you know I, I hope the kitten's getting something out of it as i'm doing that. <laughs> but 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 i do know what you mean you see that's one of our dilemmas um one of our actions as human beings is a very selfish agenda. Mm -hmm. We have a, we have, a, we have a self, well, we have, first of all, we have to self preserve. We have to eat. So like if there's no food and, and there's two people and there's only one more, one person can eat that food, 
do you eat it or do you give it to the other person? I mean, we're, we have to be self-sustaining, but um, uh, it's a problem. Like I've, I've come to the conclusion after listening to so many NDE people that there's nothing to fix here. No, you're so beautiful what you said, um, Doug, about uh, if you have food, you just give. And uh, that's why when I was in the light with Christ and I merged with love itself, that was through Christ. Uh, yeah. So um, the, the thing is that we are on a very, very dark planet, very difficult planet. Uh, and I'm Low sure we're talking, we were talking about that with uh, with Mel the other day, and I was explaining this planet. If you don't work, you die. Uh, yeah. How cruel is that? If you don't yeah. work, you're in the street, you don't have a home, and you die. When you look at different planets, and you and somebody from the outside say, "Okay, that planet." nothing and then you die so it's a very cruel and the love to share and that's why i didn't want to come back however love i always you know when when we were when i was in that light of god it was the perfect love uh, and then when i when christ uh, merged with me when he said to me i love everything i love mm. everything humanity and he said and i said to myself well i do believe that when he was explaining that to me because you were you came on earth to show us love, unconditional love, and how to love unconditionally. And uh, he said, I'll show you how love. And and then he, he merged me with uh, him and her because it was like a, a two, right. the yeah. perfect, and, and we merged into one beings. And I felt that unconditional love for everything and everyone uh, dimension, you know, um, uh, waterfall, explosion of compassion, goodness, love, kindness. And I always compare that to that huge diamond that has so many facets, but it's yeah. all shimmering at the same, at, at the different light, but it's just amazing. Unconditional love, uh, we accept the whole being, like you were saying so beautifully, as one, uh, as um, we are one with a person. So everything we experience, the person experience, we can experience and we can accept the person freely. I was not accepting my daughter. I was loving her conditionally uh, because she had discovered her bisexuality at some point. And uh, I was a strong Christian, which believed that there is no, if you go to hell and before my NDE. And so after my NDE, the beauty of it all is I discovered that unconditional love is accepting the other and celebrating the other the way they are and mm -hmm. without judgment. It's also love loving some people it's just not saying like el was saying uh i love you and i love you it's become so but love is not just saying or an, a separated element it's who we really are it's mm -hmm. our original original uh, identity we breathe love we are beings of love we are beings of light and we can at every second manifest it when we speak to people when we talk the way we think uh, every second that you can help somebody you know people are for example saying oh those beggar at the at the red light they should be working and I, and I always tell people they are working that's the job they chose eight hours in the cold in the heat it's your freedom to give or not to yeah. give. You know, so that's uh, love is going beyond self. Yeah. It's actually forgetting about who you are and always wanting the best for ourselves and and me and me and again me and and more me. It's actually who is the other? How you know? And when I was, you know, that's the beauty of it. From in my first NDE, when those beings were waiting for me, they were all about let's make Yvonne happy. What does she need? How can? And they were all serving. Do you want this? Do you want that? How can I? What do you need? There was that that fervent in 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 celebrating the other. And and for me, when I'm on Earth, that's. Uh, that's really what I'm trying to do. Sometimes it's too much for people to say, okay, too no, enough here, because we're not used to that elevation and, and that expression of love. But every moment you can be loved and, and, and give and give. Ver love is a verb too. It's not just a, yeah. a verb expression. It's something that you manifest and you activate. So that's um, 
billion i mean love is, has created everything has created i mentioned planet beings uh, that's an expression of love in in a cosmic level and we are those expression in an individual level you know I which is another thing that was true einstein said that love um, energy is love he actually said that in letters um after um that were read right after his death so that's absolutely true mm -hmm. i have an easier time of and I heard a beautiful quote that I really love. I have an easier time with the word kindness because somebody quoted on Jeff Morris show, someone said, kindness is God's love in action. Perfect, perfect. And I love that quote. Good. Uh, yeah, it's a perfect expression. To be, out, to be kind to somebody is God's love. Like to be kind when you actually don't really even, maybe a total stranger, there's no agenda. You're not getting anything from it. No, 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 none of that stuff. You're just very kind and, oh, hello, you look beautiful today. Nice to see you. What can I do for you? Can I help you with that? Even holding the door for someone is a kindness act. It's a selfless act. And I think mm -hmm. that's God's love in action. I like that quote. Yeah, it is. I love beautiful quote. I love it too. And <laughs> goodness too. Goodness. Uh, goodness, that's... kindness. Yeah. Goodness. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I felt that as well. The goodness when I was with Christ, it was the goodness, the kindness, the yeah, affection, yeah. The, affection, the the tenderness. You know, <clears throat> there's so many. It's that big, beautiful light with all those different facets that emanate yeah. everywhere. <laughs> right. Yvonne and I realized when we were talking about our experience, we both saw Christ the same way in our NDE. You know, because you do get a lot of people asking, oh, was he white? Was he dark? You know, and because they're trapped with yeah, they're trapped, yeah. earthly thinking of of Christ. Um, but I still don't know. And one of the reasons why I'm getting the hypnotherapy as to why I saw a silver sphere as well. So um, so hopefully I will have more you know, information on that part of it. What do you mean so. by a silver sphere? Well, um, in one of my last moments, um, what happened was, was that one, I had three guides in my NDE. One looked like my daughter, which is the one that I thought was, you know, keeping me connected. And um, I was getting a life review from these guides. Um, in case some of your viewers aren't familiar with a life review, um, NDEers go through like a, you know, it's kind of like counseling <laughs> um, from your spiritual, your higher spiritual beings, whether they're ancestors or angels, whatever. And um, you go through different situations and you're able to see and process things objectively. And um, I got to this point where my guide, they, they didn't speak a lot of words, just said, you know, we were in a review of something and the guide told me to um, put my hand out immediately, like, telepathically told me, put your hand out. And then, you know, I saw uh, Christ the same way that Yvonne did, which was more ethereal light. And then there, um, once I put my hand out, a silver sphere appeared in my hand. And that's where, um, around where um, Christ was emanating. And, um, and it was solid silver, very like shiny, like it was actually metal. So um, I haven't been able to, I, after my NDE, I tried to research silver sphere meaning in ufology tried to you know um see if it had any um, significance and things like that um and i'm still on that journey now so um but i do feel it it um uh intuitively i got that it was something extraterrestrial when i meditated about it after the fact i was told it was a transportation device but i don't know transportation from where I don't know, you know, from what species, whatever, but um, I was told it was a transportation device, so. Well, well you have to come back and tell us after you uh, had your your regression <laughs> and see what, what, what comes of it. In, in terms of, um, 
you both have mentioned sort of a very sort of a high level experience. And, and I think there is some truth to the fact that, that we sort of chose to do this because if you actually look, it's in an upcoming book, it's, it's finished, but it hasn't been edited yet. I talk about the guy who, when this other thing all started about 1975, early seventies, we had three things happen. There was CPR was invented. Uh, there was uh, trauma mm-hmm. units in hospitals and there was equipment in ambulances before they never had anything in ambulance. They just put you in an ambulance and drove you there and there was nothing. And the guy that invented all three, his daughter died on the way to a, to a hospital because there was nothing in an ambulance. He invented all three of those. He's considered to be a say, Czechoslovakian wow. guy. His name escapes me. They, he saved more lives than anybody in the world. And that's when they started to bring people back, the late 60s, wow. early 70s. And so it's almost like, in, in if you're familiar with uh, Dolores Cannon talks in the UFO field about the three waves, that the, the world is ready to come. And it's almost like Yvonne was talking about to say, you know, you got to go to this planet. It's time. And and you volunteered to go in there. And it's it's time. The, the veil is lifting and you're going to go in there. You're going to have this experience and you're going to, you know, get this message out. No, I don't really want to go. And then, and then you end up coming in as a volunteer. So can you talk to me about in terms of people who have had these experiences, whether it's the ET experience or whether it's yours, uh, the channeler Seth said, you manifest what happens around you. There is no other rule. It's all us. So we are part of the experience. People always have the try to talk to me about there's the experience and then there's me. And it's like, well, no, you're part of the experience. So I want you to both comment on this idea. Like in the UFO experience, you'll have people who have very sort of dark experiences. There's always fear involved. Then there's grays. And then you hear and then you start start to wonder, is that why they're seeing grays? Because they're in this. Are, are Is there actual beings there? Or are you creating beings based upon what frequency you're tuned into. And then the other part of the question is, is escape me, but is, or why do people have sort of bad near death experiences? You know, there's theories that they're trying to hang on, they're trying to control the experience and they have these sort of very negative experiences that I had doing 25 psychedelic experiences. I had five that were pretty about as grim as you can, as you can get. And the others were very blissful. So does the attitude, when you go in, do you think the attitude has something to do with what kind of experience you're having? And okay. to explain this idea that that some people have sort of horrific near-death experiences and yours were very positive. So uh, as far as Ian's uh, research on, on the near-death experience, uh, we have about 8% of the experiences that are negative. Um, and it's not always, uh, most experiences, thank- thankfully, are p- very positive in general. Uh, some negative experiences are explained as what the person has done on Earth. Uh, you know, when, when you're on Earth, you are in this body, so you do good and bad things. Um, but some people, when you come out of your body, then you are in your spirit form with the all knowledge and all understanding, and you see what you've done of your time on earth. And some of them just themselves send them to, to something be, that is at the level of the vibration they had experienced on earth. And but there's a way, there's always a way to go back there. But because when you're on earth, we have moment of joy, moment of sadness, you know, and but in that world, it's harder to have those fluctuation and people stay uh, stay in that cloak environment of minds and of reality, which is kind of dark. And the beings of light that are at the highest level for me that where god is where the divine is the he- the 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 the, he- the highest level of existence some beings that are very ancient beings still go to those levels and just tell them listen remember who you are come back home and so so some of them are due to what we have experienced on earth and where we we send ourselves because that's the level uh, we have and there are different dimension as well i i personally think there are two different things uh the physical universes and galaxies and and then the the, the divine place where all our beings <laughs> from different planet can still go after they themselves have their own end of life i feel like there are those two dimensions and um 
and so so but there are some good people ians has studied for 30 years and they cannot answer that question because there are some good people that have had a darker experience as well. So that's one of the question that is a very hard one, you you know, to answer about that. You also ask, and I really have that on my heart to answer that question about why some people have NDE and not, not other ones, and do we feel special or anything? Uh, there's also a, a study that has been done uh, by IANS to, that proved that, um, uh, there's a high percentage of people that had NDEs that had a very difficult, challenging childhood. It doesn't mean that everybody that has NDEs had that, but when you look at the calculation, the majority of the ones that had NDE had a very traumatic or hard life or, or something of that sort. And my theory about that, because you know, when my first ND happened, I did consciously felt that my battery was done. You know, like you have the Duracell battery on those ads and then at some point they slow down and then they stop. And I feel my theory was maybe, uh, maybe if everyone has a traumatic and then when they have a physical trauma, they have that NDE, maybe it's because the energy in them is probably more depleted than other ones. And because for me, I felt like my energy was totally depleted and that's why I was on my way out. And not because I was suicidal. I knew I was going to die. I had no suicidal thought, but I 100% knew that my energy of life was gone and I was moving to something else. So that's my theory. And uh, yes, we feel that it's, at fr people have to know that when you have an NDE, like, uh, like my, I'm a beautiful L was explaining, before the end year, there's a big physical trauma. And sometimes after two, uh, some people are not healed. I had the privilege to be healed from all the arrhythmia when I came back and some people get healed. But we have to know that in order to have an ND, uh, it's a lot of physical trauma before and after. And so mm -hmm. I don't recommend anyone to try to <laughs> <laughs> because uh, there's that <laughs> element that's there as well. So, but it is, we feel afterwards that it's kind of an honor and a privilege mm -hmm. to yeah. have mm -hmm. been able to experience yeah. that and hum yeah. humbly, humbly, not saying, oh, we are so much better, but right, right. And, and, and when we talk together, there's that love and uh, what I call mm -hmm. the NDE hug when we have <laughs> and the years there is all the all the the filters are gone and we just hug one another forever uh we talk about all our experiences and uh in conferences and even a funny thing is that sometimes when we are at uh, nde conference we would just talk in the lobby together all of us oh yeah you saw that and and then for example one would say which i had that experience and I and would say, oh, I remember being uh, on a platform in the middle of the universe and somebody, a teacher was teaching about the planet. And I said, I had that same experience. So when we talk like that and then we, we think of ourselves, oh, OK, if somebody in the hotel is passing by and listening to us, they probably think we are totally an insane group. <laughs> so. Yeah, I wrote the book Contact Modalities. He wrote at least one chapter, maybe more about trauma. And that's the idea we have in the world that there's, it's like we have a Santa Claus view of the world, that there's bad stuff and then there's the stuff that Santa Claus gives us. And no, it's like there's experience and there's good experiences and bad experiences. And it's the trauma experiences. People go, you know, with near-death experiences is almost always trauma. Almost all mediums, if you ask them, how was your childhood? They'll tell you, oh, it's absolutely terrible. And it's like you, it, <laughs> it rips the veil. It pops you out of it. It shuts down that that the ego mind and you're, you're fighting for your life, whatever. And it's a it's a major component, I think, is this is trauma. And we see trauma as very terrible when, in fact, the, the things that you probably learn the best are the yeah. things that happened in your trying times. When things are going good, we go, oh, I'm so smart. I got this all figured out. We don't <laughs> learn anything when things are going well. It's when yeah. things are going bad. That's what happens. That's and, so, when, yeah. and we and you, you talk about this thing about the honor. I always say it's like I always use the expression. It's like you, in Europe, you'd call it the, the World Cup. You get to live in the World Cup every day. People can maybe get to go to the World Cup or the Super Bowl one time in their life and spend five thousand dollars for a ticket. We get to play the game every day. We're in this yeah. thing because we had these experiences, and we realize 
that it's this magnificent world and there's people who are as i point out untouchables that live in the streets of calcutta who spend their day in a junkyard looking for something valuable enough to sell for food for tomorrow we didn't get to do that we got to play this, this game, have this experience and when yeah. you when you see it that way then you realize that it, it's an honor to have it but there's also the responsibility of doing something with it so did, did, did you actually get instructions at any point where they wanted you? Because a lot of UFO experiences, you'll see people where, where they'll say, they want me to write a book. And they say, I'm not writing your damn book. No, I'm not writing your book. And then say, no, the time is right. It's time to write the book. Almost like you're having the experience for a reason. It's not for entertainment. It's because they want you to share it. Because we are at this point of time, almost like the three waves where in 1975 or whatever, people start coming in. And before 1975, near-death experience, people think you're absolutely insane. Now people will say, no, I don't believe it, but I know what it is. I mean, there's so <laughs> ma so much stories. It's just a matter of time, almost like whether it's African-American rights or gay rights or whatever it is, it gets to the certain point where it just sort of flips. And then everybody goes like, when, when did when did it become okay to be for gay people to get married? And you go, I don't know, what, 20 years ago? Twenty? I don't know. It just, it just happens. It just suddenly flips. Yeah. And you can say all the bad things you want about it. But the more we talk about it, the, 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 the higher the consciousness rises and suddenly everybody realizes, oh, it's very simple. That's that's the way it is. And so uh, I, I appreciate the fact that you're out there telling the story. But did anybody did they actually sort of impress upon you that they wanted you to share this or did you just that was implied? Uh, Yvonne, really, do you want to go first? Oh, yeah. OK, thank you so much, Elle. Uh, for me, uh, you see, I was in the in the church, in the Christian church. So my first experience, uh, I knew there was an afterlife somehow, somewhere, but it was not what I was planning with the two beings and a spaceship and everything. And uh, and so, um, uh, what was your question again? Sorry. Uh, uh, just just the idea of whether you were were you encouraged to spread the word or to to yes. get this out that that is this happening for a reason. Yeah, so uh, so for me, uh, after when I came back, um, I uh, I felt uncomfortable to share all that immediately uh, because I had to to the two experiences happened the same month, and my second I call it the big one with God, and it's just like difficult to even put it in words. It's so pale, uh, but um, when I came back, I felt that I had. Uh, I looked for people that were like me and I found irons. I was so privileged to live right in the city where the headquarters are. I mean, it was like, uh, and then I looked at online and I said, maybe I should uh, try to, to join them. And then I see, oh, they have a meeting. Oh, it's next week. Oh, it's around the corner of my street. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's two meetings. And then they always said, we came to pick you up, Yvonne, and, and, and leave. And uh, so I was immediately with... Um, with not, it took me two years or until when I, like Elle was explaining, it's all gradual, the time that you realize, or you look online, you just wonder what happened, and then finally you connect. And uh, and so I was really quickly encouraged to share my story because they said, we'd like to hear what you said. And at the very beginning, I was like, uh, and then I'm, I'm sorry, and maybe you won't believe it. And say, Yvonne, say whatever you want. We, you're in a group where you all say everyone will believe everything you said. <laughs> so, so for me, I was immediately able to share in different groups. And then I had a group here for five years where I was inviting people. Nell has been invited to a group, to our local group here uh, to speak. That's how we met. Um, so uh, I was immediately in, and I feel that what I do generally in those meetings is I do some uh, afterlife meditations, which brings people to experience the afterlife without having to die. And mm -hmm. I bring people, and we uh, we we have a yearly NDE retreat here in Virginia Beach, where uh, experiencers come, and uh, we everyone share their experience, and we talk about the difficulty to be understood and and encourage each other because we all feel like we come from. It's like we feel like we come from another planet, and then we are in another planet, forced to be in another planet where we don't understand anymore all the rules or anything. So. Uh, and so what I do, I create, and I can send you the link if you want to check, uh, really like how it feels to leave earth and go back home through meditation and 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 generally people. So I, tr I think for me, one of my mission is to really share with people, but also make them feel how the love and how, how they, 
what it is to feel home and encourage them to to keep on hanging on to the journey and that to tell, to remind them that they are hero be heroes because coming on earth is a very very challenging time every day we have to, we are challenged every day we have lots of things that we have to overcome every day other planets are much better <laughs> and we have paradise planet very close to where god is mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. where you can experience all the heavenly things so we are really people that have come here are very uh very brave and very courageous and Maybe we should see ourselves in a in a more positive and loving light, uh, and say, as long as you do your best to love and to give and to share. So I, I that's my message generally when I I'm invited to speak, and, mm -hmm. and I do meditations as well. Yeah. L L D, you're. Yeah, for me it was different. Um, I didn't start talking about my experience for. Uh, quite a while because I was also surrounded by a lot of more traditionally thinking people. So I, you know, I thought, oh my gosh, this is so odd. How do I even begin to explain this? I had a cousin who was even an atheist. And so I kind of felt like um, the only one that I really could share my whole NDE with was my daughter because I felt really connected to her um, in my NDE. And um, there were a lot of things that I didn't understand. I didn't know anything about ions. Um, and one day I just said, you know what? I'm gonna start talking about this because again, I started, you know, I was just feeling like this has got to come out. And I, I wasn't told that this was a mission of mine. I was kind of left to figure things out um, myself. But I constantly had heard this like nudge, like this psychic nudge, like um, you need to talk, you need to share um, after the NDE, but I just wasn't ready to. And so I didn't. And I did a, a TikTok post one day and um, one of the comments responded and said, you know, you should reach out to IONS. So um, I, I you know, joined IONS. And um, then I saw a, um, a Netflix documentary of other people who had off-world experiences. And I read a book by PMH Atwater, who, um, who um, had several NDEs herself and also went off planet for her NDE. And I gradually, I tiptoed my way in to speaking about it more and more because, you know, um, also because I wanted to kind of analyze my own situation. Um, one of the things that um, was shared was about good and bad. And on the other side, you kind of realize and see that things are not, uh, things aren't broken down into what's good and what's bad. They're broken down into what's high vibrational and low vibrational. And things are more about energy and high frequency or different frequencies and uh, things like that. So it was, um, you know, I kind of learned to, I had to also process and learn to adjust. So I feel like I was more of a slow learner after my NDE, but yeah. So that's basically what happened with me. You know, Grant, I wanted to say, of course, you know, Grant, and L now knows because we've been conversing and speaking for a little while. You've written many books and I've written this musical. And in this, okay. music, yeah, I wrote, a, I wrote a, a musical called Hypnata. And in this musical, much of what we're all talking about, I've brought into the show, not being an NDE person. I've like taken all this on. Now, Grant, I have a character in my show called um, Grant Campbell, who represents Grant Cameron, and, <laughs> and he sing and and he sings in the show the rhythm that everything is about rhythm and vibration, and everything is about uh, vibrating. We we live in a vibrating world, and I have a lot of this. A lot of this stuff is in my show, and yet I, I wonder what. I know why I wrote the show. I think I did, but I wonder why I was so possessed to do this. Like, why am I here? 
why am I doing all this and not something else? And like, what what brings me into this UFO and NDE world so strongly now? And uh, that I feel like I'm home with all you guys and all this kind of conversation. You know, I mean, who knows? I may have had an event that I don't remember when I was a kid. I don't know. It doesn't matter. That's very possible. That's yeah. very possible that you had it is an, possible. an ND as an infant. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, do you know if your mother had any issue giving you giving birth to you? She never mentioned anything like that? Never mentioned. We, she had two children that died prior to birth. They, they, were, they didn't come into the world. Twins that passed okay. away before myself and my brother Greg and two siblings. I mean, I, I had I had a horrific, it sticks in my mind, a horrific nightmare as a kid that scared the daylights out of me. And I've been recently looking back at that nightmare. I actually thought it was a Catholic school nun on my wall, which was this right <laughs> thing. Oh my God. Don't talk to me about that. I a have little old have nun and she was like, and I was, but I've, re I've recently given that a lot of thought and thought, I don't know, it's possible. Maybe I saw a being, a, a gray, a, a something, and I didn't know what it was and it scared the daylights out of me and I freaked out. And, you know, my brother and I were out in the yard one day and we saw a UFO and I don't remember m me being there, he does. He said, we were there, we saw the UFO and it was in the sky and it was the oddest thing. And no one can recollect where was I, even though he knows I was there. I don't have any recollection of the story. So it does show you that you get wiped. But um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm it's yeah. curious that I'm pursuing this thing. I mean, seven years of work now on this oh, show. Yeah. I'd love to see the show. Uh, yeah, is so it out? Is no, it out? no it's, it's in the finishing stages. It's so much work. It's in the finish, finishing stages, and and Elle and I have been helping. Uh, Elle, Elle's been talking about helping me and Wes working together a little bit. Um, it just now is in the next stage where it needs to get birthed. I need to find a way to get it now into the real world of on the stage, even on a little theater or whatever. But and it's about all this stuff, and it's very inspirational about you know death and passing over, and that we're not a body and ufos and everything so that's my calling to this entire thing even though i didn't have an nde you know and from what i observed too um and doug and i kind of talked about this from what i observed he's going about it in a way where it's like an mission it's like something that he has to do and is supposed to do and i and i intuitively felt that as soon as he was telling me about that and I'm not necessarily into plays or, you know, things like that, but this felt inc incredibly important. And the fact that, um, you know, Doug, that you didn't have an NDE, but, you know, I saw some of the script and things were very realistic and tapped into issues that people who experience a contact event or go off world, whether it be through an NDE or something else, this even the, the the words and the communication was and the the uh, the issues surrounding all of that were very realistic. So, you know, I believe that you know you've got some divine inspiration with Hypnata, and you're supposed to do this. This is one of your missions. So yeah, and yeah, I, it seems like I have to carry it through, and I'm close. And but when I say I'm close, I don't really know what close means because. You know, one of the things I think I'm here to learn, or one of the, I think we all have to learn patience because we're all working on things. And mm -hmm. when you're working on something, that means you're working towards something usually. And, you, and you're wondering, when is it going to come to fruition, whether it's writing a book or writing a musical or, or taking on a job, um, you're sort of doing something. And I'm like, it could be 10 years off from getting recognition. I don't know. Or it could be tomorrow. I have, I have no idea. So it's a good life in a way. It's like a good life that I continue to work on it and that this is a mission. It's as good a mission. I, I think God gave me as good a mission as I could have. What an honor and privilege it is to be able to create music and share music with beautiful. other people. This it's is a, so beautiful because I, I heard music uh, 
at some point in uh, heavenly music and uh music is a very big um big thing in the other life as well uh yeah. I did it's hear like bread and butter yeah it's like bread and it's butter and, music, and, yeah. and it's elevating it's mm -hmm. part of everything and so it's vibrational it's vibrational, it's vibrational. We, yeah we are we're vibrations yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's a way of communicating as well. Yeah. Actually, yeah. we're all music because yeah, we're all because different frequencies. We make up a song. So yeah. a universe, yes, <laughs> a universal song. And we have a lot of nostalgia with it. Like you can remember, I can remember a gal I was dating when I was like 16 years old. She lived on the back street. And, and I, I know the song. If that song comes on, I would immediately think of her and that road on the back of my neighborhood when I was a kid. Immediately I'll think of it. Because music has a tie to nostalgia, where we were at the time or something that we heard. Whereas art, painting and so and so, I kind of said everything I wanted to say with art and painting. Painting is not the same kind of, it's a beautiful art. They are all beautiful arts, but it's not the same vibrational communication thing. It's not like, uh, I don't I don't go, oh, oh, I just thought of Mary, because I saw that Rembrandt over there. I'm, no, I don't, no. I don't, music I don't is in that. Yeah, music is in us. Yeah. Music is in us. I mean, uh, my daughter is a musician, and uh, she composed song in the past as well. So music was all over the house growing up. And I understand music is us. It's part of our DNA. Uh, like uh, it's it's vibrational. It brings us in a state, vibrational state of. A live elevated one where our being is feeling really relaxed, feeling we connect uh, to that positive vibration, and it's so important for us when we are in in such a low and darker yeah. and happy one that elevate us uh, and bring us back, give us back the. It's like a a, a tank of energy yeah. that right. we get inside our spirit uh, being. It's it's amazing. So well, I'm excited that I you. Elle will do something with that, and I'm looking forward. Yeah, I have. We we have a very good vibe about each other. There's like a symbol. Yeah, she told me. She told yeah. me. Yeah. That. She told and, me. Uh, that. And you know, so it, you know, because you you meet people in the world and you want to work with them. Let's say you want to work with them, but it usually just ends at their skill level and your skill level. But when you meet somebody in the world that has a skill level, but also has a heart and soul and picture of um, the ethereal. The, the other than this earth realm, this, you know, and a person that's aware and awake to that is not common. It's not a common thing for me to, you know, most people that I know don't, would not fit in. Most people in my world would not fit into this conversation. They wouldn't even know what we're talking about. I also believe that, um, you know, when we have mass contact or whatever, I would not be surprised if one of the communication tools was tone or music with extraterrestrial beings, you know, oh, uh, it's universal. Talking about music, uh, it, I agree totally with you because um, one day I had that dream, because after you have NDEs and all those things, you have all kind of dreams. A lot of weird experiences. A lot of weird experiences in the dream and out of body experience and mm -hmm. travels. And I have so many that happen, but uh, so one of them was a dream where uh, I was in a room where uh, everything was just dark and there was those those dark things that were invading the room and I felt like I was going to be annihilated by that. And mm -hmm. as soon as I felt that the last patch of thing coming, dark thing coming, was an going to annihilate me, I saw about 12 type of beings, angel beings, they were circling, but from the outside, their body, you know, they were facing the outside and and they they were lifting their hand and they screamed a sound. They lifted the sound together and then those things disappeared. And they said to me, Yvonne, you have, whenever you have darkness or dark energy around you coming, just leave that sound to God and it's gonna disappear. So, but when I woke up, I forgot the sound. I said, yeah, I know the sound, but I don't know. <laughs> I forgot that sound. What was that sound? But so for two or three years, I was like, each time I had an issue, I said, I wish I remember that sound. Yeah. And then I went to Ions and I'm sitting next to a lady for lunch. Uh, and we talk together and uh, she says to me, uh, how is your life, your love life? And I said, well, 
my professional life, success, love life has always been a disaster. And she <laughs> said, well, you know, she said, <laughs> she said, well, and especially NDE experiencers, 70% divorce. Uh, seven, after their NDE, 70%. Wow. So we become such a different beings. I'm glad I got mine over with before. Yeah, my <laughs> before you had your NDE. Yes, me too, me too. It was over before too. But uh, it was over before too. But um, uh, a lot of the married one, because the one that is remaining without the experience didn't marry that that, that person. You know, they, they yeah. just didn't sign up for that. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, yeah. So, uh, and um, uh, I just, uh, I don't know what I was saying that suddenly with that, uh, where I was going. Um, what was I saying again? I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> now, you, you... Can I pose a question here in terms yeah. of, uh, you mentioned this this idea of, of knowing. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it is in the uh, UFO experiencer community, which is, has very high divorce rate as well. Um, 40% of all people say at one point during their experience, they knew the answer to everything in the universe. I think the near death experience figure is 31%. Do you, is there, is there truth to that in terms of you, you're behind the veil here? You don't really know what's going on, but you go there and you suddenly instantly know how it works. Cause yeah. I, I, I even Absolutely. asked people, I, that was something that really shocked me. I'd even ask them, I'd say, how do you know you knew everything? I'd had, you know, there wasn't like number six, seven, eight on the far side of the universe that I got to tell you about. And then they'd say exactly what I had because I had a download experience. It was, I'm not sure. I just know. And the thing is, no, not think. I know I, yeah. that, that everything was there. And it fades as you come back into the world. All that knowledge yeah. fades away. Yeah, 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 yeah. True. that's totally true. I mean, um, w when I first went into my NDE, let's just call it that, but it's, you know, um, um, I asked my guides to show me different things of the world because, um, like Yvonne beautifully put, I was feeling the same way. My battery was drained and I did not believe in suicide. I wasn't suicidal, but I just did not want to be here for a while. And, you know, um, even though I love my daughter more than life itself and, um, I asked uh, my guides, and I'd, I'd even said this before I, this day, that day came where I had an NDE, that if I ever had, you know, if I was ever dying or died, I wanted to um, ask questions as to what's really going on in the world, who's behind everything, you know, <laughs> um, address all of the uh, little things that I didn't trust about the world and find out what the real story was the knowing basically. And I, you know, that was part of my life review. I was taken through these different things where the guides kind of answered my questions, showed me different things that were going on in the world. Uh, some of the things I probably could have, you know, kept without seeing, but, you know, um, I know the way that I understand life now is a lot differently than before. So, um, I, I more, I have more hope now anyway, yeah. but, um, you know, there, there is a lot, um, going on behind the scenes of the world that, um, is really heartbreaking. And, um, when you come back, um, you know, you kind of feel like when you know something, it's like, even if somebody else says something, there's something in you that just says, that's true. And it could be your guide. It could be, yeah. you know, just whatever it is that you're still connected to. Um, that's true. And, you know, I talked about um, one time, and I think Yvonne, I, I, don't, I don't know if we talked about this as well, but one of the things I discovered was that, you know, some people believe that you have a higher self. There, um, you do have a higher self. And your higher self, it can actually be one of your guides. And that was one of the things that I didn't realize before. So um, one of my guides is me as the, the me who would have completely died. So, you know, you, you, you start to know certain things in a more deeper way and in a more universally connected way. And so it's, um, it's comforting, you know. So, wow. 
-hmm. that's, that's great. I have, I have a lot of that. I have a lot of intuition and knowledge of, of things that I don't have knowledge of. Mm -hmm. I have like, I just know that I know it. Right. And, and they're the kinds of things that you just can't even argue with somebody, but I just right. simply know it. I'm sorry. That's right. the way it is. I know the story looks like this on the outside, but I know it's not. And I right. know, and I've always wondered what that is. I wanted to ask you both what what do you because I pray a lot now. I never used to pray, and mm -hmm. I pray every day. I would say I'm praying pretty steadily for two years. In fact, I just put um, I don't know if I shared this with you, Al, but I put the Our Father prayer to music. I made a I made a, a, a song, song, and it's, uh, it's what a I would. Uh, Doug, what I encourage you to do. No, you didn't tell me that, but what I would encourage you to do go look up the Aramaic version of Our Father in the actual original Aramaic. It will okay. blow your mind. Okay. I want to learn how to say it. I want to memorize it because it the words, words have power yeah. and also words have frequency. You can literally yeah. open things, yeah. open portals, for example, with words. You can open... Yeah you know, lots of things and speak things into existence. And a lot has been changed in the religious world. And um, uh, the Our Father um, in Aramaic, what Jesus actually said, that I believe is the true, um, oh, the, the, the true interpretation, the true words, the yeah. true message, right? Thanks, Yvonne. The true message well, that is actually what the Our Father is supposed to be. Well, the spirit of, I mean, it may, it, it's its probably a standard Bible, Our Father, the one I was taught when I was in school. So, and I, mm -hmm. I recited it, but the spirit of it is in prayer and the spirit of the music. And I'll share it with everybody. I'll send, it's a little short video. I'd love, I'd love to and hear. And there's no singing. I just put, the, I just put the words and I just put the music and you can recite it to the music through the music. I'll share it. But I mean, I wanted to ask you both, what does prayer do? Who, what, what is prayer affecting? Now I have guides, I have angels, right? I have guides, I have beings around me, don't I? <laughs> am I praying to them? I, am I, what, what does prayer do? Uh, prayer strong enough to combat teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, can say, I can say that prayer can do so many good things. Uh, before my near that experience, I, I was a minister um, in France. Um, so I would spend a lot of time in prayer, sometimes seven or eight hours a day. I had taken a, a break from, from the, the work in itself, sometimes fasting for a few, two or three weeks and uh, with water and just praying. And so what it did for me, prayer, it is disconnecting with all the reality of this body and this reality and connecting yourself with the reality that is the reality of the divine of God, which is the highest reality. And then when you connect with that, anything that you are asking is possible and can come to life. Mm -hmm. uh, and like uh, Elle was beautifully saying that words have energy and vibration. And when you bring, when you speak things in that level, in that Air in that uh, arena of divine, it, it actually can manifest in real life. Uh, you can also open. Uh, you can also open a, a channel to uh, to hear more about the spiritual world to your life. When I was in France and I was that minister before, uh, when I would uh, when I would actually pray for a few hours and just. My, when then I would be invited to speak in some of the gatherings or a, a conference, and and actually it would open yourself to have knowledge on of people's needs and people's pain. I would know that this person wanted to commit suicide. I knew that woman had been sexually abused right. before. Mm -hmm. I knew uh, everything was coming to you. You have that connection, right. but also it creates. Uh, it creates what we call miracles, but it creates a new reality that can change. Uh, it's such a powerful tool that we can ask our creator that created dimension, universe, planet, aliens, 
uh, that same creator can act, we can communicate with that because we are part of it and, and re-manifest it here. I've seen so many beautiful things. You can change circumstances as well when you are in that reality and bring that life that and speak that life. In, that's why I always try to speak positive, elevating things, uh, because when we speak negativity on ourselves, we are we're not enabling those beautiful things to come to existence in our life and also in other people's life. I've seen I've seen uh, people circumstance change, uh, healing occurs in bodies and and things like that in people. And, and to finish, uh, one of my friends is a near death experiencer as well. She uh, she's bleeded uh, her vein. I mean, anyway, she was in the hospital in surgery. And she wanted to stay home. She wanted to stay. She was in the hall of life. There is a hall of life in that world uh, where you have all our life are stored and all, all the lives are stored of everyone. And you can pick it up once you are in, in, in that world. You can actually pick any book of life and read it as if it was a book, but it's a life that we have experienced to learn more. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was in that hall of life uh, where, and that hall of life also, uh, that's where you, some of us go before we come to earth to to choose what's going to happen in our life. And sometimes our angels or guides remove a few things and say that's going to be too much of a challenge. Don't don't take this thing. But she wanted to stay. They asked her, "Do you want to go back or stay here?" And she said, I want to stay, that, that other earth is, is over, it's over. But then they showed her, her daughter was praying for her to go back on earth, uh, to earth. And they showed us her that those prayers were like musical notes. Oh, and they yeah. were coming, they were all like musical notes and they were coming on that celestial jar oh. and it was creating energy. And, and it was just the most amazing melody and when she saw that and she heard it, she said, I have to go back and and be with my daughter because she suddenly remember she remembered that when she was on earth at 12, her dad died. And it was such a trauma for her. Oh, and she said, I have to go back. So that was her prayer, the prayer that brought her back. And oftentimes experiencers say that they are very happy over there, but people are praying for them <laughs> and to go back. Well, yeah. have to go yeah. back. <laughs> Well, that was a great, yeah. that was a great explanation. I love that explanation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, really well said, Yvonne. And and um, another thing too is that um, prayers are also nourishing. Um, we forget that you know prayers and um, speaking words are like water, and you know that nourishes us. And you know when people are praying, they're actually nourishing our soul and nourishing that energy that can help us to be alive and you know we kind of um talk about this um you know like she was mentioning about people singing and praying and things like that and i remember when you know since i went in and out of my body i remember a time where some of the people with the church that i used to belong to they were I was told this after the fact, they were in my room singing um, songs to me. And I, re I remember that, I don't know if I was um, in my body for a long time after that, but um, I heard them, I heard the songs, I heard the music. So, you know, music wow. is very powerful. Very Words are very powerful. Meditation and prayer is extremely okay. powerful and right. very nourishing. For the soul, yeah, I like, I like that nourishing. It nourishes our soul and our spirit. Mm -hmm. It's like our daily, the daily bread that is talked right. about. Actually, right, that literally, energy mm -hmm. of life through mm -hmm. us. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Grant, we're we're over a little over two hours. Yep. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, we it could talk for another. It didn't feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> what what I what I'd like to propose is that we can maybe bring in another near death experiences and have. Our two guests today join us as well because they're so informative and there's so much stuff that I haven't haven't even uh, addressed with them. The idea that you know this this idea about weird things happening after your near death experience, uh, you know whether it's orbs or you know uh, st stuff that follows you around and stuff like that. I, I would love to continue the conversation and maybe just bring in another near death experience or with another story and 
and have everybody join and ask questions because you guys are, have so much information. And you're so knowledgeable, but you've spent a lot of time uh, researching this and, and, and you've got a lot of answers that I think that, that other near earth experiences would, would gain from. And, and I think the people that are watching uh, this show today will be just fascinated with the, the knowledge that you have. It's tremendous, tremendous amount of material that you, you, you both have dug up and, and, I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out. So, if you want to, if you want to, maybe go to another session, Doug. We can, we can shut you this know, down and we'll I, put I, it out I, as, I, as two yeah. parts. Because I definitely want to say something really quickly. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Sure. Oh, um, uh, since Grant, um, a lot of your audience is, um, you know, UFO, um, ufology based, and things like that. I wanted to say that. Um, I don't know what it is, you know, if this is the case for NDEers that don't go off planet. Um, um, Yvonne can probably speak to this as well, but we do and have had connection with um, ETs after the fact. Um, yeah, I haven't that. spoken a lot about it. Huh? No, me neither. No, go ahead. A number two to speak about all those. There's so much right. more. Yeah, right. Well, we have to do yeah. a show on that because that that's yeah. fascinating because it all ties together. Even when Yvonne was talking about the fact she lives in Virginia Beach, well, when I was a young kid, I went to Virginia Beach for one reason, one reason only, and that was the Edgar Casey Foundation. I was just yes. absolutely well, fascinated before that's I had UFO. Is. Yeah, each year actually yeah, the Ions, Ions. Ions, Ions, Ions Virginia Beach is actually in the Edgar Casey buildings. Mm -hmm. and when we have our retreat, our annual retreat in Virginia Beach, one of the highlights we take the group because it's each time other people that are registering, we take them to the Edgar Casey uh, Center. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so hey, hey, Grant. I, I, Grant, I thought you were going to say I go to Virginia Beach for girls. <laughs> no, 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 there's no girls. No, I'm, just... <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, what do you mean, Edgar Casey? I thought so too. What a nice spiritual way to pay it to end. <laughs> I, I still, I still remember being there. That they had the meditation room, and they had yeah. all the books, like any UFO book, any paranormal book, any near the experience book and i was like wow and I, I would take a book and i'd go sit on the beach and i just sit there and read it and then take it back and get another book and go sit on the beach i was just floored wow. By place. Wow. I, I had i used to buy all the collections i had all the books of all the readings i was yeah. absolutely enthralled that's how it started for me before i had ufos i was just uh, enthralled so it, it, everything ties together that's the thing is is you get this stuff and then you get more synchronicities and and more stuff so maybe we could even do a show just more another one on ufos but i would i would definitely the et thing but i would definitely like to have uh both of you come back to help us ask questions of other people because i'm oh, just yeah. sort of sitting there watching you guys uh, you know know what to bring up especially yvonne you said you you had a group which we do as well as we i had started one called uh, experiences anonymous based on, oh. on alcoholics anonymous because i had a lot of experience with alcoholic people and wow. it was the idea that you need a place where people can go in there and actually just sit in the room and not say anything for two years. And they're going, no, I'm not like these people. No, no. And they just uh -huh. when somebody tells their story. They go, yeah, that's me. OK. And, and, <laughs> and, and we even banned one guy at the very beginning because he kept asking people, what's your experience? What are you doing here? I said, you can't do that. Stop it. Or, and we banned the guy. We said, no, you can't. You have, you have to allow people to sit in the room. And when it's time right. for them to talk, they'll talk. So I, I really yeah. appreciate the fact that you guys have that's, that's such what we a Virginia Beach with the experiencers. We are there, all of us, and and we give each a person the time to express themselves. And but we have time. We have to time that. Uh, and then a funny thing as well, because we didn't even approach the fact that experiencers have after effects, and that's uh, that's was the video I did. Uh, uh, back from the light, uh, but uh, we all have after effect, and one of them is is the electricity thing, uh, where we because we left our body, so the 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 electricity and the wavelength and everything is kind of messed up. And one day we were all our experiences. We go to a restaurant, <laughs> and then the lights one after the other turn off in the restaurant. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember going to an airport. What's going on? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I remember going through TSA and they were picking up electri um, electricity off oh, of my TSA. body. 
yeah. and I had to keep yeah. going back through and I was like I don't have anything on it it, it, yeah. it, it is because of your near-death experience right. it, it, yeah. it <laughs> wow then, then let's do it let's do another show on, yeah. on just that ET component because we know that about experiences too they can't wear watches they turn off uh Chris Bledsoe who's the painting behind the the woman that that told Chris Chris, you have a burden and it is yours to carry. That was what that woman told him. And uh, he told me, he made a list for me. How many washers and dryers and fridges and microwaves that just blew out? He, he, he couldn't go near my bulbs. <laughs> they blow up and yeah. stuff like that. And, yeah. and so you're talking the same thing. Yeah. I just I, I, work, I work in IT and my first year of after my NDE, two of my computer blew up. And I was so afraid to lo to lose my job because now it's like the second one, and oh. you know, and then yeah. watch watches and. But it is, you know, it's good that ions exist, and I'm not trying to promote it, but they've oh. done a lot of good things because some of people feel think that they're spooky because uh, their battery turned mm. down, the lights. They don't understand what's happening, so right. they think that they are cursed or something, and then. They, <laughs> Ions, and we explain mm -hmm. that's totally normal. These are after effect. Mm -hmm. It brings such a peace in their mind. Yeah. And before to go, Doug, I think that you you talked about all your intuition and how you are highly extrasensory. Uh, maybe even if you didn't have an experience, maybe you came from the other world, from the pre-life. Uh, you mm -hmm. came already with some. You know, all our faculties are closed because we are extremely powerful beings. We can do all mm -hmm. kinds of things. And all that is locked when we come here. Maybe yours, you had a little opening that yeah. was still there and then you brought it with you. And that's why you always felt those different things and maybe those dreams and all those experiences because you could see a world that maybe other people couldn't. Yeah. So I'm, well, I'm going to to me about you. The fact that both of you guys are interested in this is, you know, some indication that there's some type of either calling to do this or some type of deeper connection or maybe something happened that you didn't even realize because you know the veil is is thin but some people pick up on it um, like yourselves um, a little bit more. Um, there was a guy who was a doctor who emailed me who um, you know said that for 15 years he hadn't spoken about his NDE because he felt that sense of weirdness. And then he uh, finally felt like he could start sharing about it. The more people who share, who, you know, are logically minded people, <laughs> who, you know, um, are not crazy, things like that, it can help, you know, to really help some people who need to know that there's more to this life, as well as that it's okay to 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 have those connections and have those odd experiences in life you know? you know before we go i'll just say this and i know the two of you will have no shortage of nde volunteers to come on the show <laughs> i have uh i have two friends that i've met through the same way that i met l um sandy toronto wrote a book called dandelion child it's one of the probably the hardest life i've ever read that a child could have it is a, a life of abject torture from from uh foster parents who did everything you name it to this kid had her convinced she was a dog had her eat off the floor beat her froze her burned her everything and she died and she crossed over and her angel was there her angel said follow your father into that room and listen to what they say and remember it. And then we're going to go. And the angel took her for a journey and showed her everything and this and that. She's an amazing woman. I just wanted to tell you about her because that's a whole other side to the story and, and her view on it. She just wrote this book. And uh, then there's my, my other friend um, who, who took her life. She committed suicide in New Zealand and she, crossed over and same thing she left her child she said oh my child will be fine when she was leaving her body no my child will be fine and she has an entire journey and coming back and being put in a um sort of a psych ward and there were two or three beings in that psych ward she thought were regular people but they were angels and they told her don't say anything don't say anything about what you went through 
Don't tell that woman. She'll lock you up in here forever. They guided her. And she came through it. And she's an amazing person. Those two I would love to invite. I don't know if that's too heavy, heavy for everybody. But they would be an amazing duo to have in or one of them at least well, one at a time yeah do one one and then we can yeah. we can go down that road because and then we have the well we, we you have a lot a lot of them and i think if you get a series going uh, i i'm honored to have been able to talk to our guest today i think this is where we got to go i mean i always say this thing with the sightings even if there's just one I'm, I'm lecturing in in first time i'm going in the states for a long time to lecture but I'm doing the one where I talk about UFO sightings and I and I describe if you're familiar with the Skinwalker Ranch thing. They tell the story about the the six witnesses and they've got uh, night binoculars and this thing comes over the ridge and comes towards them and they're all got their night binoculars, all the same brand of like night binoculars and they're watching and then at the end of the night they all review what they saw and they all saw something different. And I say that sightings that's like a total waste of time. You have people like we have on today yeah. that can actually you're in the field that you're where the information is. I am so honored to be able to sh get this material and then share it with people. Cause this is where it's at. This is what's actually going on. The, the only question we have in life is why do we come here? Where are we going when we die? And what are we supposed to be doing when we're getting here? If we agree to agree something, nothing else matters. It doesn't matter how many right. UFO say yeah. how many rides no, no. you go to or whatever. It's this is really what it's about. Bad. Oh, nothing, nothing. Yeah. Oh, get, getting exactly. my show, getting my show on stage is the getting floor. your shows. But that's part, yeah. of this, that's, part of, that's part of this mystery is, is this understanding. You know, so I, I, I'm just, again, I, I can't thank you enough for, for this you, information. This is what oh, that interests thank me. You. Grant, I thank just have you to say one thing for, in, in, in benefit of Grant because uh, El and um, Yvonne, you don't know him as well as I do. There isn't, I'm, I'm grateful to have you, Grant, want to do this because you are the knowledge base that Grant Cameron has in ufology in years and years from his from his original experience of Charlie Red Star, which I, I've always been fascinated with, all the books he's written, all the conferences he's gone to, the speaking events, the engagements, the the research, the uh, the the classified documents that he's gotten his hands on, the this and that of everything, it's unbelievable. The Trevor tre treasure trove Grant Cameron is of knowledge. So thank you, sir. What an honor to be here, invited, yeah. uh, Doug. And El, thank you so much for thinking of me to be part of it. That was really an, a gift of us that you shared your time with me. And and Doug, it's just Grant and Doug. Uh, and Doug, it's just amazing. And Doug. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's an amazing time. This, this may be your calling, Doug. You, the, 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 uh, maybe yeah. the Broadway play was just a diversion to get you to do this. It could be. I, I've, often, <laughs> I've often thought about that. When I get over the other side, they're going to hear something from me about that. <laughs> I've done far too much work yeah. to come this far to just do some interviews. But okay. no, this is great. So uh, I look forward thank to Thank you all. so much, Grant and Doug. Um, we really appreciate you um, giving us opportunity to share our story and to get it out to other people and have this discussion. So thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank Good you. Night, au revoir. All right. Au revoir. Thank you again. Au revoir. Peace out. Bye. Peace out. <laughs> <Okay>. Nano, nano. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye.